Hey, Ting Ting here. Today, guys, we're making a video how to install Stable Diffusion. You might have seen I made a video about how to install Stable Diffusion. It came out the day Stable Diffusion released, but by now it's outdated since the community is constantly making updates and changes and stuff. So I decided I want to make an updated video on how to properly install it, along with some bonus extra tips for how to set things up and features that you might not have known about. So if you already have Stable Diffusion installed, that might be interesting for you. Yeah, so the first thing you're going to want to do is go to this link here. That's going to take you to this website. There's a bunch of different Stable Diffusion versions. Like when it just released, there was really just only one. But now there's a bunch of different ones. This is the one that's most used, has most of the features, and it's also easy to install. Click here on code, then click download zip. When you download it, you should have a file, Stable Diffusion, Web UI, master.zip. You can download this to anyone, you can save it to anyone, it doesn't matter where you save it. Next thing you're going to want to download is Python at this link here, if you don't already have it installed. That link is going to take you to this page here. You want to scroll down and come down to Windows Installer. You just have to click that. I'm assuming you're on Windows. I believe this works on Mac and Linux as well. Well, the automatic repo, I have not tested it myself though. The other thing you're going to download is Git. You're going to want to come to this link here get windows as i said now you want to get standalone installer 64 bit another file you're going to want to download is the stable diffusion model just recently it got updated to stable diffusion 1.5 that's what we're going to be using in this video so you want to go to this link here and when you arrive on the page you should see this if you do not have a Hugging Face account, you'll have to create a Hugging Face account in order to be able to see this. So keep that in mind. There's 1.5 or 1-5 prune.checkpoint and 1.5. There's comparisons between these. Um, this is the one I'm going to be using in the video here. Click the download and wait for this file here to download. And then, yeah. So now you should have everything that you need to download downloaded. Now we can come back to our folder here. You can see we, I still have the Stable Diffusion Web UI Master. You see Stable Diffusion Web UI Master in this folder here. You just want to take this and drag it out of here. Okay, great. Now we should have a folder, Stable Diffusion Web UI Master. First thing we want to do here, the model that we downloaded, we want to move it inside of this folder. So wherever you downloaded that file, you want to go and get it. So you can see here, I have it here, 1-5 EMA only, da da da. Take the file and rename it to model.checkpoint, model.ckpt. Now you want to install the two files that you downloaded. We want to install git, so just double click on the install file for git. You don't have to change from the default setting, so just leave everything as is. You'll see a lot of different menus. You don't have to change anything. Just leave everything as it is, so don't worry. So we'll just wait for this to install. Now we want to install Python to so double click the install. When you get to the installation, you do have to change the setting with this. Make sure to click add Python 3.10 to path. Make sure to click this, then just click install now. So when you see the setup was successful, you finish close. Now we can go to the Stable Diffusion Web UI master folder where you have all of your Stable Diffusion files. If you were listening, already have your model.checkpoint file here. And then great, all you need to do now is just click web UI user .bat. You just have to open up this file here. And now you want to wait for this to install. It's going to take a while, by the way. So just keep that in mind. It's not going to happen immediately. It might seem like it's stuck here on installing Torch and Torch Vision. Again, it takes a little bit. So just wait. And you'll see other things as well that it goes through the installation process of. And it seems like it's paused. It's not paused. It's just taking a while. It has to download some files in the background and stuff. So just be patient and it will finish. Keep in mind, if you're on Mac or Linux and you were still following this tutorial, you'd want to use this file, Web UI dash user dot sh you'd want to use this one instead one of the things about this too if you use that file it'll install everything but it also runs stable diffusion at the same time okay great so now what you will see is running on local url so in order to be able to use this you have to use it inside of your browser keep in mind it works offline so you don't need internet you just need a web browser to access the thing so that's what we're going to do and open up our web browser here and you type in the url that you saw in the the command prompt and this will open up the stable diffusion window now we're inside a stable diffusion here. So I'm going to show you some tip to try to make this better in a little bit, but I just want to show you that it's working. So I'll just go dog. Then I click the generate button here. I'm not going to change any of these settings or anything. And yeah, you can see I got an image of a dog. If I click the button again, 
I'll get another image of a dog. Okay, great. As you can see, you've installed it. And it was much easier if you watch my other video and you watch this video in terms of the length. This one is much easier than the other one. But now let's look at some of the settings you might want to change. Come here to settings. If you noticed, when I was generating images earlier, let me come back and show you again. If I generate another image of a dog, I could just keep clicking the button there. You'll see, eventually I see my dog after it's generated, right? But one thing you can turn on, if you come to settings and you come down on this side, down to user interface, you can see show image creation progress every end sampling step. If you just move this up to one, effectively what will happen is we come all the way back up, we click apply settings. If you don't click that, the setting would not have changed. So make sure to click this. You can see one settings changed, right? Go back over to text. You can see I have 20 steps here is what this is set to sampling step. So every one step, I should see a update on the image. Of course, it doesn't actually work like that, but let me actually show you what will happen here. Yeah, and what you'll see is I get iterative updates on the image. So I don't have to wait for it to finish. I should get to see it as it goes. Uh, and you'll also notice I didn't get 20 updates on that image. I said it's a one, but I got like maybe like four or so. I don't know what it is. Maybe it has a minimum amount or something. I don't know what it is. Another setting you can change is this one, which is enable quantization in case samplers for sharper and cleaner results. Basically, this should improve the results with some of the samplers. Make sure to test these things, compare them, see if it actually leads to benefits for you. Click apply settings to have the settings go through. You need to restart in order to see the thing, which is pretty good because there's some startup settings I also wanna show you guys. If you wanna close off Stable Diffusion, when you open up this window, you'll also see that you get a command window as well. Let me show you. So this window, you'll see that this is live giving me updates for what's going on inside of that window, right? So if I close this now, even though this window is still open, Stable Diffusion isn't working. So if I, if I click generate now, you'll see nothing happens. And what we want to do now, we want to go to web UI user dot bat and you want to click edit and you want to come down to command line args and we want to change some settings. So now we want to look at an optimization setting. So there's three different ones. There's X formers, med VRAM and low VRAM. With Xformers, you're dealing with a increase in the speed of generation of images, but also the amount of VRAM that it consumes goes down as well. So VRAM goes down, speed goes up. However, you do end up with a slight reduction in the image quality. It's very slight. You might not even notice. I'll show some images here. The other one is med VRAM. I believe with med VRAM, that's actually the default setting now. So maybe it doesn't matter. Maybe that's already how it is. I'm not 100% sure, but this should result in a reduction in VRAM and it should slightly reduce speed but if you have enough vram then it actually wouldn't reduce speed so it should either be exactly the same or just less vram and slightly slower and then you have low vram which reduces the vram even more but also would result in a slower generation time okay so what we're going to be using here is x formers so we type in dash dash x Formers. Depending on the card that you have, X formers might not behave properly. I believe it's for the RTX cards. It works the best, but you can try on other cards and see if it works because some people say it works well, some people say it doesn't. So try it and see if it works for you because there's conflicting reports depending on which cards it is that you have. But again, if you didn't want to use X formers, you just type dash med VRAM is what you type for the medium VRAM one. And then low VRAM is what you type for the low VRAM. One. Okay. But as I said, in this case, we're doing X formers. So we go X formers. Again, notice no space here, right? No, don't, don't put a space here. All right. Yeah. So once you've changed these things, you want to save the file. So make sure it's saved, close off. And now when we run Xformers is going to get run. You can see here, it says installing Xformers. Go back to the same page. I mean, the first generation is actually pretty slow. It is a slower one. So let, let's like wait for it to like thing. Or it says go again now. If you look at the time to generate here versus the first one, you can see that it's slightly faster. Keep in mind, I'm also recording as well. So that could be affecting things. Yeah, we're going to take this image and we're going to click send to image to image. And we can come over here. You'll see something interrogate clip and interrogate deep Dan Buru. If you put an image in image to image, you can actually do this here. I can go interrogate clip. The first time you click it, it should take a little bit. Yeah, but what you have to see here, a dog with a black black and white face and the brown nose and the black and white nose and the black and the brown one white nose <laughs> by whoever. Actually, by the way, more than likely, if you're going to be using the interrogate thing, you want to come to settings, interrogate options. You see, use artists from artist.cv. Turn this off. Like most of the time, that's just inaccurate. So just, just remove that. I, I haven't really noticed much success with that. You can see that this gives you back a description of the image and you can use this then. Let's take this description. Obviously, it said a, a brown and white nose a bunch way too much, but we're going to generate an image and we can see see what image we get off of that. Again, not exactly the same dog, not at all, but you can see what I mean. It just gives you a description of the image and it can be helpful. But here's what we're going to do here, right? Dog wearing cap. This is just for a test. I want to show you another feature as well. So you get an image of a dog wearing a cap. You want to now go over to this section, PNG.
PNG info. And the cool thing about this is you can, when you generate images using SD, information about the generation of the image is added by default to the image itself. Let me show you what I mean. So if I click on this and I go to the folder that contains all of the images, I'm in the installation folder here. You would want to go to outputs, text to image images. And here you can see all the images that we would have generated over the course of the video. So if I click on this dog, that's the one wearing the cap, by the way, we open, you'll see the prompt is here, the amount of steps, because we can come back to here and we can see that the steps were on 20. So it has that, it has the, the sampler that we use, the CFG, the seed, the size of the image, the hash of the model, the amount of clip skip that we had. So that's the setting we changed earlier. And if I just come here now, let me actually generate another image. Let's go cat. And we're going to change some of these settings. All right, so this is an image of a cat, right? If I come here and I go send to text the image, you can see that this is a different resolution. It's a different amount of steps. It's a different CFG. If I come to PNG info, send to text the image, you'll see all of the settings change. And if I click generate, I'll get back the same image. Yeah, I'll get back the same image of the dog that I had before. So this is just one thing that you might not have known that you can get the actual data that was used to make the image by uploading the image. So if you forgot the prompt for an image, you can just do this assuming you didn't change that setting and turn it off. Okay, another setting I wanna show is if you come here, you can see that the amount of images I generate here at batch count, yeah, it tops out at 100. If you try to set this number higher, like you do like one, two, two, it won't work. It won't allow you to set a number higher than the amount here. So if you wanna generate more than a default number of images, there's two ways you can do it. So the easiest way, make sure that your seed is set to minus one. So you can just click this button here. So you right click, so don't left click on the generate button and then click generate forever. And this will just keep infinite generating images. So that's one way to get past your the limit of 100, right? Where, where you just generate infinitely and you, you obviously have to stop it at some point. But yeah, this is one way to do it. If you want to stop it, by the way, you can't just come here. You might see interrupt. If I click interrupt, it doesn't actually stop it. It just interrupts the current generation. So you want to right click again and then click cancel generate forever and then it will stop. So that's one way. But another way you can do it, we're going to close it off again. I'm going to go back into the folder here and this is the installation folder. We're going to come to UI config json i want to edit this and now all of the default settings or the limits of all of the settings are inside of here search for 100 or whatever the limit of the thing was right you can search for 100 so you can see here text to image batch count maximum and now we can just change this so let's say a thousand and then save the file and keep in mind obviously if you look around you can see every single one of the settings you can change what their defaults are from this so we come here now and we launch web ui user that bat again go back into our browser and what you'll see if i come over here now if i move the number, you'll see that the new max is set to a thousand. And you can obviously set that to whatever number it is. Just be wary that the lower you set it, the harder it is to make slight incremental adjustments. So you have to come over here, to like move the number around and stuff. That's how you change that. So anyway, guys, thanks for watching the video. Hopefully, even though things will change in the future, considering Automatic has been the leader or the forefront stable diffusion version for a very long time, I think that it's not going to need any much in the way of updates or whatever, right? So just keep in mind the time when the video is updated in case anything's there. You can check if there's any comment that I made to say if this is outdated or whatever. But yeah, if you like the video, make sure to like the video, check out my other videos and yeah.